And bottom line, why did you decide to go for the second trial? Uh, we followed the process that our office always follows when there's a mistrial as a result of a hung jury. We found the fact that Mr. Kellen Winslow has been convicted of forcible rape uh, as well as misdemeanor offenses of a sexual nature involving two additional victims uh, that this uh, voted rather well for a retrial. Uh, when we consider also the fact that there were 10 uh, members of the community who came together and found that he did in fact commit the crimes beyond a reasonable doubt, the other forcible sex offenses, that was a significant factor in our decision to uh, seek a retrial. Mr. Owens, what charges uh, are we retrying here? All of them? Or? All of the mistried counts will be uh, part of this retrial. As of right now, we informed the court that we do seek to um, obtain convictions as it relates to all of the Jane Doe's who were the subject of the first trial. So what does that mean for Jane Doe number three who had one count and was convicted? Uh, he was convicted with regard to that. Jane Doe number three may testify in this retrial depending upon the court's rulings on some of the motions that we will hear on September 4th and September 5th. Does that mean Jane Doe two also you will retry her on the hung count with regard to the second central act? Jane Doe number two uh, was the victim of forcible rape uh, based upon the jury's finding in this last case. The jury did find by a 10-2 margin that she was also a victim of forcible sodomy. So there will be a charge that the new jury will hear uh, on the forcible sodomy count uh, involving Jane Doe two. And why do you want Jane Doe three to testify? Jane Doe three, the fact that he committed the indecent exposure against her uh, would be considered 1108 evidence or sexual propensity evidence that shows uh, that he has a predisposition to uh, commit sexual acts. Jane Doe five, there were two mistried counts, but two others that were decided. How does that play, play in the trial? So the two pending counts that relate to the willful cruelty to an elder and elder abuse are the subject of this continued trial. Uh, but the testimony as it relates to all of the contact that she had with Mr. Winslow that included the lewd acts that she reported to law enforcement would also be the subject of this trial. The judge was rather frank in terms of granting no bail during this process. Comment? I agree with the court's finding that Mr. Winslow does pose a substantial danger of inflicting great bodily injury to another person, and that is the finding that he has to make in order to deny bail. But moreover, Mr. Winslow is now a convicted forcible rapist, and as the court noted in, uh, in, when we were in session earlier today, uh, the judge found that every single time he has a criminal defendant that's pending sentencing, that tends to be his, his routine, especially one who's convicted of such serious violent offenses. And should he be convicted of a second forcible rape that is looking at life as opposed to nine years? That is correct. If he is convicted of multiple forcible sex crimes, whether they be rape or forcible oral copulation or forcible sodomy, Mr. Winslow is facing life in prison. In layman's terms, he's going, well, he was definitely going to go away for eight or nine years. But uh, in the DA's mind, that wasn't enough for what you saw. The district attorney made a decision based upon the favorable split of 10 jurors finding that Mr. Winslow was guilty of multiple forcible sex crimes, that the danger that he posed to the community and the fact that we would be able to obtain justice for more victims, uh, that we would seek to retry these, uh, these counts. Witness in the new trial? That's going to be subject to motions uh, in the court's decision. What exactly did he say to them? You can reveal that. What I have commented on in public previously is that in January of 2019, while Mr. Winslow was out on bail uh, and being monitored via GPS anklet, that he had driven up to a young girl who had been walking home from high school. She was an 18-year-old high school senior, and that when he pulled up alongside her, he had told her that she was cute. Uh, he had told her that he had seen her in the area. He asked her how old she was and where she lived. And while he, she was having that conversation, the young girl grew extremely uncomfortable and then fled to a friend's uh, residence nearby and reported it to law enforcement. She did not know Mr. Winslow at the time, uh, but when she reported uh, that incident, law enforcement followed up on it. Did he offer her a ride? No further comment on that incident. To be clear, I know the defense at one point wanted some of the charges, but separately. Once again, they'll be together. 
Well, that will be subject to renewed motions, I'm sure. I know that the defense has every opportunity to file a motion for severance of the counts. The court has previously ruled on those motions, but the court will, of course, have to take a separate look at them. Uh, previously, the people filed a motion to consolidate the three separate cases. We have been successful thus far in keeping the cases together, uh, and I would expect that in the retrial we would be able to do the same. It's really dependent upon the court's rulings on the motions. And why is that advantageous? I wouldn't necessarily say that it's advantageous, but it's really what the law allows. And it does allow us to be able to show that Mr. Winslow does have the sexual propensity to commit these sexual crimes. I was wondering how the acquittal will be handled in the next trial. <coughs> so, the, so the jury's findings as to the acquittal uh, will not be the subject uh, whatsoever of this trial. So the fact that a prior jury found him not guilty of lewd conduct in the jacuzzi incident on February 22nd, 2019, uh, I do not expect that that fact will be presented to the jury. The testimony as it relates to Mr. Winslow's conduct that also would be the basis for the willful cruelty to an elder and battery of an elder would still be coming in. Would the defense also be barred from bringing up the acquittal then? As far as the jury's finding of acquittal, the law would preclude them from being able to comment on that. It's well, difficult enough to, to uh, get a good jury who, for the first trial who haven't heard of them or who you know, don't know what's going on because of all the publicity and all the media, is it going to be even more difficult to get another jury as this case goes on and on? I think uh, the process that we followed last time and the process that I would expect that we follow in the retrial will ensure that we have a fair and impartial jury that would be able to fairly consider the facts. What about the conviction? Will that also not be part of the trial or will that be allowed? The fact of conviction itself would be subject to motions, uh, but the fact that he committed the crime uh, would be something that the judge can instruct the jury to consider uh, during the course of the evidence in this case. Thank you. Anything else? Thank you guys.